Here you have it. Colorado loses its first game of the year, and they get absolutely trounced by Oregon, 42-6, to in a game that was 35-0 at one point, 42-0 at another point, and it didn't look like Colorado stood much of a chance the entire game. Uh, this was one that many people expected, some people were hoping wouldn't happen, but ultimately the talent discrepancy and the years of building an identity and a culture into a program came to rear its ugly head for the University of Colorado. But there are some things to take away from this game. Uh, one, the CU Buffs are obviously not there yet. They are behind their counterparts, such as Oregon, presumably USC, also presumably Washington, and some of the other elite programs around the nation. CU has a lot going for it. They have an infrastructure that seems to be in place. They have a belief system that is getting stronger and stronger by the day. But you cannot overcome a substantial talent gap between programs on a quarter-by-quarter -quarter basis in college football. That is just not the way it works. Sometimes you see FCS programs put up very good fights versus FBS programs for at least a quarter and maybe sometimes a half. But... When you can go two to three deep with three, four, and five stars, that's a lot to overcome. And right now, CU just doesn't have that. They had complete roster overall. Deion Sanders, this is his first season of integrating a new culture, identity, and belief system. And right now, a lot of people are taking the time to celebrate and really dance on the quote-unquote grave of CU losing its first game of the week and of the year, rather, in such awful fashion for CU fans. So... But I think what's interesting is, is that there is a lot to come from this. Uh, today, they only amassed 199 total yards, 159 passing yards, and 40 rushing yards. 3.4 yards to play, only 14 first downs. They were only 5 of 14 on third downs, and they had a total of 59 plays with 8 punts while giving up 522 yards and 240 yards rushing. Talent gap is just not good enough. So... I think what needs to be said is that Deion Sanders and the CU Buffaloes have a lot to work on, no doubt. Deion Sanders and the CU Buffaloes have gotten a lot of national attention and acclaim, but that's just what happens when you associate with Deion Sanders. You will get acclaim. The ESPNs and Fox Sports of the world, they care about what you have to say. But on the other side of this, a lot of people are turning their eye to this program saying that this is what they deserve, when in fact, that if you come into a program that was 1-11 and the year before and you're already 3-0 and to start the year, you're already building a healthy culture. You're already building a new philosophy in place. But it takes time to get the talent to meet said philosophy and culture. So I predicted this going into the season, that they were going to struggle against key matchups like this. Now, I think what's been good for college football is that you get a brand new wave of leadership and identity in such a cool fashionable way that kids care about and they care about winning and they care about winning in a way that's meaningful to them and I think Shadour, Travis Hunter and Deion Sanders they have enough around them to continue to get better as the future goes on but you know what it was a disappointing loss for CU fans but again if you're a college football fan then you kind of expected this there were 22 point dogs going into the game for a reason so Again, it's frustrating, I know, if you're a CU fan, but I would take hope that Deion Sanders will get this program scored away, and they are already off to a better start than I think anybody could have predicted now 3-1 and one going into USC back at home in Colorado next weekend, y'all. So we'll see what time it is, y'all. Let me know what y'all think. Thoughts on the game? Takeaways? Let me know, y'all. Hey, I'll see y'all on the other side.